Coming into this one, we were kind of hoping the Raptors could possibly build off of that win over the Sacramento Kings in Sacramento a few nights ago. A defensive end that did not happen today. And it's very simple. How the, well, in the sense of me explaining it. <laughs> how the Raptors lost this game today. First off, they dropped this one 129-117 to the Golden State Warriors. And do not look at that, that Golden State Warriors record this season. Their home record is ridiculous. And the road record ain't good, but you know what? They beat Toronto in Toronto. So... And it is what it is. The Raptors, with the loss, is now tw are now twenty two and twenty eight on the season. And if you if you watch most of the game, you would have seen Masai and Bobby Webster in the stands in the, at this game tonight. So what that means, take it for what it is. But it's very simple how this Raptor team lost the game for the first what half of the game, really. They were playing all up on the three-point line. And look, that's where Golden State makes their money. They're, they're first in attempts. They're first in makes. It could be, they could be first in percentage. I could be wrong with that. But they're way up there in every three-point shooting category. So you got to take that away or at least try and contain it. But instead, what Golden State was doing is everybody without the ball was making a cut to the basket. And I don't know how many times in that first half, especially, where they're just wide open lamps. Curry hits, you know, clay in motion or Draymond cutting to the basket for an easy layup. And I'm like, um, why is this happening constantly? So then in the second half, the, and at one point the Raptors, I think, were leading in three-point makes. Uh, like 9-7 at one point, right? And the percentages were better for the Raptors as well. They were doing a really nice job defending the three at least. But then in the second half, you weren't seeing many more of those ball cut, the, the off-ball cuts leading for easy layups. But instead, they were getting wide open threes. And you give a team like that that many wide open looks, they will kill you. Let's break down this game as a whole though. First quarter, it was back and forth offense. Again, in that first quarter, a lot of easy baskets for them. The Raptors making a lot of shots early. And they were leading by two after the first quarter. In the second, you know, they hold Golden State to under 30. You only, you know, allow 29. But the problem is you only score 26. You're minus three and you're minus one at the break. It's basically a tie game going into halftime. So how are we going to come out in the, uh, in the third quarter and maybe make that punch? Well, the Raptors don't, right? The, the offense still good. You drop 32. You're doing okay. But you allow 35. And the big part of that 35 is Kaminga. He knocked down four threes in the third quarter. And this is where I look at the Toronto Raptors as like, you know, we talk, we talk about shooting off the bench, right? And I, hey, as much as we love Boucher and we love Precious and we, they did great again tonight, you don't have shooting off the bench, Right? And what did Golden State get today from their bench shooting-wise? Well, DiVincenzo knocked down two threes. Kaminga knocked down four threes. Jermichael Green knocked down one three. So they combined for seven threes, okay? The Raptors uh, combined for one. And it was Chris Boucher. Not a guy you... Tr and he's shooting, what, 30% on the season from three? Not a guy you like shooting the three. So that was, that, that's a big problem. But Kaminga dropping four threes in the latter half of that third quarter to put Golden State up. I mean, that was a big part of that basketball game because then they lead by four going into the fourth quarter. And then in the fourth, the Raptors, they're exhausted because, you know, how many minutes did they play? Their main guys, right? Curry Curry played the most. He played 35, then Clay played 29, and then, no, that's minute, that's points. <laughs> Curry played 38, play, Clay played 37. And everybody else was no higher than 33. The Raptors, Fred played 40, Pascal played 39, Scotty played 36, Presh played 36, and Gary played 36. We've talked about it before. Having guys that are not dead tired on their feet in the dying frame, especially when it, it was just such a fast game in the sense that everybody's run up and down the floor constantly. It was back and forth, back and forth. It was a good basketball game to watch if you like offense. But in that fourth quarter, the Raptors' offense dried up. 
and Golden State couldn't miss threes. They were getting wide open shots. And they win that fourth quarter by 8, 31, 27. And they win by 12, 129, 117. There's so many storylines from this game. You can look at Pascal Siakam. And I, as much as we've all loved Pascal and the All-NBA talent in the first half of the year, we're like, man, this guy is going to be All-NBA again. I don't like his game today. 21-7-3, look, nice stat line. But you could tell right from the get-go, his shot was not falling. He was he was having a tough time hitting shots. He shot he started one of nine from the field. He ended the game eight for twenty six. He took twenty six shots. It was four or five from the free throw line. One of six from three. You're not making shots in the paint. You're one of you took six threes. That's I'm sorry, but I don't like the, when you're not feeling it. And other guys are, like Fred was feeling it. Gary shot 50% from the field. Scotty shot 9 of 15. Heck, Precious shot 8 of 12. I'd like to see guys who are feeling it take those shots. I'll be, yes, he's your best player, so you live and die with your best players. I get that. But 8 for 26 and 1 of 6 from 3, and I don't know how many times he's dribbling into a mess and just looking for a call. And it just makes me pull my hair out watching him lie on the floor just complaining to the official as the ball, as the plate's coming down the other way. And the Golden State Warriors team, who loves to run the ball like that and be quick strike offense, the ball's in your, bu- in your basket before you get up off the floor. So it's painful. Gary, look, I, I didn't think he forced the offense. I would have loved to see him be more a part of the offense. But the last 17, 4 and 2, shot 7 of 14 from the field, 3 of 7 from 3. I thought he was fine. I thought he was just fine. Defensively, like everybody was, eh. That, that, that's, about, that's about all I can give you. You allowed 129. And we'll get to the percentages in a second. They weren't pretty. Fred, I thought him and Scotty were the best two players on the floor for the Raptors on both ends of the ball. You know, Fred Van Vliet, 28 points, 4 boards, 10 assists. I guess he'd love seeing that blue and gold all over the place as he just rises to the occasion. But 28, 4, and 10. Shot 11 of 20 from the field. Was 1 of 1 from the line. 5 of 10 from 3. And again, I would have loved to see him shoot more. Uh, had a steal and a block. Did turn the ball over 5 times. But when, you, when you're going to be the ball handler for the most part, you're going to have some turnovers here and there. So I'm not going to be, I can't, I can't get at Fred for that. And obviously, OG and Anobi left the game after, what was it, like 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes uh, after, look, this is the problem with OG. We've talked about it countless times when he's when his ball handling and his driving and he's so erratic and all over the place. Look at that play. I, I'm glad he's, you know, okay. it was okay to get up and walk off. Hopefully the wrist is okay. Um, but when he got up there, he was just all flailing all over the place. And then he gets contact and he's flailing on his back. And it's just like, man, you put yourself in a terrible situation so glad he's okay because when he fell on that shoulder i'm like oh god i don't know if he can put much weight on that shoulder very much he was able to get up and it seemed to be the wrist that was the issue so hopefully he's okay scotty i thought was remarkable again you know the last game it was the defense and the facilitating tonight it was the offense Early on in the game, Scotty had like 7, 4, and 3 in like the first quarter. And you're like, oh my god, Scotty is buzzing. He ends the game with 24 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists on 9 of 15 shooting. Was 4 of 5 from the free throw line. 2 of 3 from distance. And had 2 blocks and both blocks were nasty. One was on Clay, and was the other one on, was it DiVincenzo or Jordan Poole? I can't remember. I think Poole? No, it was actually, it might have been Curry actually. I can't remember who it was um, at the rim. I thought he played great. The one turnover that frustrates me, and it was a big part of the game. You know, I think he only had two turnovers in the game, and you can't fault him for it, but it was the miscommunication with him and Pascal where he tries to pass it over to him, and Pascal's looking the other way, or right as he passes it, Pascal looks away, and the ball just goes past Pascal and out of bounds. And that was after, like, I think the Raptors got a stop, or they got, they got a bucket, then they got a stop, and you're like, okay, you're buzzing, you, you're only down like five at the time, and then you turn the ball over, then they get a three, and it's just like it, it just it just kills you. It's like a five point swinger where everyone will look at it. So it's painful, but overall, I thought Scotty played a really good game today, and we've seen this a lot recently with him. He's kind of taking the charge. He's you know he, he's being a lot more of a an on ball guy, and he's just such a smart player. 
uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun watching him grow this, this second half of the season. We obviously know in the first half he wasn't playing up to expectations, and there's a lot of questions about him. And Masai had the sit-down with him, and a lot of things have changed since. Um, the bench unit looked precious. 17-11-2. Gave you a double-double. Really nice. 8 of 12 from the, uh, from the field. 1 of 3 from the free throw line. Missed both threes. Chris Boucher, 7 points, 9 boards. Really struggled with the offense today. Was 2 of 9 from the field. 2 of 5 from, th- uh, from the free throw line. 1 of 3 from distance. Had a steal and a block. And these team stats are the glaring issues. The Raptors took... 11 more field goal attempts than Golden State Warriors. They made four more shots from the field. We shot 46% from the field. They shot, I'm sorry, this is why it was, we were talking about the first half numbers and how they were so easy getting in the paint. They shot 56% from the field. You're asking for trouble. You know, Raptors end up, like I mentioned, they were up 9, 7, and 3s at one point. So keep that in mind. They end the game 12 for 33 from the free throw, from, from 3, 36%, which is eh, not great, but it's not terrible. We've seen a lot worse. Whereas Golden State shoots 42% from 3, and they knock down 18 threes. They end the game after I saw that stat with an 11 3 run in three points made. That's a That's a massive gap. Huge. And the free throw line. Raptors shoot 62% from the free throw line. We're 13 for 21. They missed eight free throws. That is such a big number. They shot 73% from the line, which is kind of shocking. But again, and and like I said, that's Chris Boucher and Precious. Like they combined. What is that? They combined for five of the eight misses. Like that's big. Your bench guys are not shooting the three. And if they're not making free throws, I love the energy stuff, getting the boards, right? Because how many offensive boards do those guys have combined? Where are we here? Uh, offensive rebounds. They combined. Okay, I didn't realize it was that crazy. They combined for 10 of the 14 Raptors offensive boards. Lots of energy. Precious gave you 17-11. Even Chris Boucher, Boucher gave you 7 points and 9 boards. Great. But they missed Five free throws, and they were one of five from three. Like, God, you're not getting much from that. So, a lot of pain in there. Also, can we just take a minute to to talk about the Golden State Warriors ball movement and how it's just so beautiful to watch as a pure basketball fan? They had 40 assists tonight. The Raptors were minus 16 in the assists. It's just, it's great when you see a team move the ball. We thought, I think they had, the Raptors had 28 assists against Sacramento. When the ball's humming and you try to put a good look for a great look. It's gorgeous. Didn't happen tonight for the Raptors. Did not happen. And we stayed up late for it. <laughs> and we gotta stay up late again tomorrow as the Raptors are in Portland taking on the Trailblazers. <sighs> You know, 10 p.m. tip-off there, and it's the final 10 p.m. game of the season, I want to say. I sure hope so. Oh, actually, wait. They play the Lakers and the Clippers, don't they, at one point? Hold on a minute here. Oh, God. I thought this was the last one, but I don't think we faced those guys. Well, we definitely haven't faced them yet. Yeah, a 10 and 10.30 game in March. Great. Great! But they're not back-to-backs. We have a little bit of a reprieval? Anyways, you know what, guys? That is going to do for this one. If you enjoyed the video, it's late. Smack that like button. I do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like? From today's game for the Toronto Raptors, the Twitter and Instagram links are down in the description. So follow up, send me a DM, do that great stuff. The Discord link is down below. So follow up there. Go do so. And I'll talk to you guys Leafs edition on Sunday evening as they host the Washington Capitals at Scotiabank Arena. Looking to get back in the wind column after tonight's uh, really, really bad loss against the Ottawa Senators. And as for the Toronto Raptors, they're back in action tomorrow night as they host... No, they're not hosting. They're in Portland taking on the Trail Blazers at 10 p.m. The final 10 p.m. game for at least a, <laughs> a little bit. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and parts of the game tonight. We'll talk to you guys then.